let's move on to our next example. Uh, so example one, two, uh, Professor Paluch is shopping for furniture. He finds a chair that costs $125 and a sofa for $200. He decides to purchase two chairs and one sofa, assuming he has a 20% off coupon and sales tax is 8%. What is his total cost? Uh, and we're told that um, the, the answer we should get is $388.80. Uh, okay, so let's go to MATLAB and see if we can do it. Okay, so I'm back in MATLAB, uh, and I've kept the problem statement open on the bottom so you can see and reference it. Okay. And the first thing you'll see is, and you know, I'm following up example uh, 1.1, uh, and so before I begin this next example, it might be desirable to clear the contents of my workspace, uh, of my command window, and also to clear out all the variables in my workspace. And how I can do that is to first remove the variables in my workspace, Command is clear, variables, bam. And then to clear my command window, so to erase my whiteboard, the command is CLC. Excellent. Okay. Now that it looks like we're starting afresh, let's tackle this example problem. Okay. Uh, so we're purchasing a chair and or two chairs and a sofa, and then we're going to apply a coupon and add sales tax to my cost. Okay. Uh, excellent. Okay, so let's start by uh, assigning the cost of a uh, chair and sofa to variable uh, representative of the cost of a chair uh, and a sofa. So, uh, first we're told that the cost of a chair is $125. So let's create a variable of, say, chair cost is equal to 125. So we're going to assign the value of 125 to the target chair cost. Okay, next comes a sofa. Sofa costs 200. So we're going to assign the value of 200 to the variable sofa cost. Excellent. Okay, so now that we have the cost of the, uh, well, sofa and, and chair costs, we could go and compute our subtotal. Uh, or, in the interest of creating all these variables, let's save our coupon and uh, tax rate um, also to variables. So let's start with a, a coupon. Um, so our coupon is 20%, uh, so we'll store 0 0.2 to that variable. And then tax rate, so the tax rate's 8% or 8 out of 100, 0 0.08. Okay, cool. Okay, so now that we have all the information we could possibly need uh, stored to variables, let's start the calculation. First, let's compute our subtotal uh, before any discounts or tax. So we're told that I am purchasing uh, two chairs and a sofa. So we'll say subtotal one is equal to uh, two times the cost of a chair plus the cost of a sofa. Okay, so my subtotal is $450. Next, Let's, let's apply our 20% discount because coupons always are applied before sales tax because there's never a break uh, on tax. Okay, So uh, to figure out the new subtotal after the coupon, okay, our new subtotal will be the original subtotal. Okay, So let's type it subtotal 1 minus my discount's going to be my coupon times my subtotal. Okay, so my discount, if I make sure I spell it right, will be the coupon times the subtotal, so that's 0 0.2 times our 450, and we'll subtract that from our original subtotal. Okay, I could combine this and be subtotal 1 times 1 minus coupon rate, um, but all is good. It's MATLAB performing the work uh, and not me. So after I remove my coupon, my new subtotal is $360. And now on the last step, we want to add sales tax. So my final cost will be equal to uh, my subtotal 2, all right, my subtotal with the coupon removed, plus what am I going to pay in tax? Well, that'll be that tax rate times that previous subtotal. Cool. 
In doing so, we find that my final cost is $388.80, exactly as it is in the problem statement, or what they tell you the answer will be. So notice, in format short, uh, MATLAB reports four decimal places, so 8000, okay? Um, of course, if this were money, all we would care about is the first two, okay? But it's going to display four uh, just because that's MATLAB's format short. Okay, excellent. Another um, uh, scenario that was presented uh, in the solution as written in the text is when we're dealing with money, when it comes to our decimal places, we only care about the first two, right? Or the first two are the um, meaningful or important ones. So if, you know, just as a test, maybe, you know, Finn, some final cost, it came out to be 388.9876, okay? Well, if I wanted to, you know, relate this to a cost, what I would need to do is round my answer um, so that I round it up to the hundreds place, right? So I only want two decimal places. And so MATLAB conveniently has a function to round, okay? And so if I were to look at the documentation, say help round, okay? The two uh, cases that we'll look at uh, mainly in this course is just round, and if I pass to it a value, it'll round to the nearest integer. Or if I provide a second argument, which is the number of decimal places I'm interested in, it'll round to that number of decimal places. Okay. So in this case, okay, if I type fin to bring it back up, if I want to round uh, to the nearest two decimal places, the command would be round fin comma two. If I do that, I get $388.99, okay? So it rounds to the nearest hundreds place. And again, note, we still get four decimal places because that's MATLAB's format short. Okay. So that wraps up exercise two. Uh, if you're hanging with me, you are doing an excellent job.